like a I can just delete that as well, I just call it delete automation. Right. So what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to have this gain up around five point just under six for these kind of coy parts. But I want to bring it down to about or just over three then for these louder parts. So you use control plus L, yes? What's that? When you Mark with blue color. You do use Control and L. Uh, control and L. That's that would be for say if I wanted to loop the parts. Yeah. So I'm not looping this time. What I'm doing is I'm just going to change the automation for these different parts. So see the gain is up at about six now. I just double click and see the way this line here. Hang on. Stop again. See whenever I click one of these controls. These, the names change over here, it says clean volume. And see the way that line changes there. So whatever like whatever control I click on, there's a dotted line for it. And you can have any amount of, of these automation lines on a track. Like you can have an automation line for all of these controls, and then about 10 other effects on it, and automation lines for them as well. Would it be tricky and complicated? Yeah, it would, but you can do it. But we're just going to do one for this game control. So now it says clean guitar gain. So now the level of this line controls the level of this dial. So I'm going to draw a few dots along here. And see that I'm just dragging that down there. So then, yeah, it's too low. And maybe I want to zoom in here. See that I have the mouse up the top here at this little hand. And you can just move these around as free as you want. Is that kind of coming clear what I want to do? Yeah. You can do the same thing if you want to build it up so, so slowly you just put it on the slant. Yeah, exactly. Or you can say if you wanted uh, an outro of the song to kind of uh, fade away, yeah. you can just do that with the master volume level. Okay. You can do it with anything. That's where you get nice kind of flow and dynamic mixes, you know, and you can do nice things with effects where you don't use effects all the time, it's just have effects coming in, yeah. or effects coming in, and then the parameters of the effects change. Mm -hmm. So there we have. Watch this then change. Okay, so we're happy with that. So the other thing that I do as well a lot is use the modulation effects say like chorus or uh, the flanger. The flanger is a bit harsher. I think I might just use the chorus on this one. I tend to go for the one that's actually called chorus. Now I control onto the entire group, but then I put a chorus effect on the kind of room sound of the guitar, so I'm not sure if I want to do that. Might sound okay, but a funny feeling it wouldn't. Right, dry wet control. Just here, start coming up around here. Now, some of these effects, they all have lots of controls, and when you don't know what they are, it's very hard to know what you're doing. But these nice squares with the dots, it's going to affect the shape. So I kind of made it a little bit kind of more extreme, but then I turned the dry red down. But these things, you need to turn them on and off to see what they're doing. When I want to. So, Julia, what you were saying, say if I just wanted to hear the distorted part, I can highlight the distorted part, go control it. That's softening it. So it's mean chorus will be only in the blue part, what you highlight with blue. Oh no, the, the chorus will be on the whole thing. But if I wanted it only on the blue part, I can see this on and off switch here. Now it says chorus device on. Yeah. So now I see when the, the line is down, it's off. And I can turn on, let's say, a pen tool. And 
now it's only going to be on during that part. So say if I turn off the loop. So.
So the feedback allows me to kind of hear the time of the FM. I'm going to stop and start with just, I think that it's part of the rhythm song. So you're saying if that went to retro, you wouldn't have to do it that way here, you wouldn't have to do it. Exactly, it'd be all the synced up, eh? If you hear the BPM of the song, if I actually have an app on my phone, and you can get them for nothing. Android or uh, uh, iPhones, and you just basically go tap, 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 and I'll tell you, tell you the tempo. So that'd be, that'd be another way of doing it. Now I'm going to add a reverb as well. So are they playing on a, in a concert hall or are they playing in a room? Now last week we did it in a room, so let's go for a concert hall this time, add a bit of drama to it. Point the integrity for reverb. Actually, I'll just write up something after the delay is close. Delays are good for guitars, <coughs> uh, vocals. Sometimes snare. When he says morning, listen to this. Two o'clock on Thursday morning, and I'm walking down her street. It's very, it is kind of got a nasally tone to it. Now you can pick that out around here. Two o'clock on Thursday morning. Two o'clock on Thursday morning. Alright, holding that back down into the mix. Two o'clock on Thursday morning. And I'm walking down her street. Now, yeah, wanna give him a bit of a boost at 5k? Two o'clock on Thursday morning, and I'm walking. Two o'clock on Thursday morning, and I'm walking down her street. Like it were a call when I'm outside. Two o'clock on Thursday morning. Alright, I'll listen to that. 
Stuff might pop out of you that gets a little bit annoying, like say the drum bus, the team pilot is a little bit overhead. <laughs> That's, the, that's basically the process. Now, is there anything that you want me to go over there particularly again? We take a break there anyway. Yeah? So there's a the mix I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so file. Save life set as. Mm -hmm. And I see, no, you, now we are in a hard drive. Right? You oh, come so back to save it on the computer. In as computer, well. yeah. Okay. So. You see. In computer, in computer. Yeah, I'd say just save it on this. Yeah, no, I, I probably wouldn't save it on In computer. myself, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so. Okay, so you go to the desktop. Yeah, a desktop, yeah. Desktop, yeah. Yeah. And just put your name at the end of mix exercise one. Yeah. Yeah, so just type your name there. Yep. Yeah. Oi. Yeah. yeah. And just press save. Then. So it will be now. It's now it will be in this desktop. Yeah. In the computer as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So, and then yeah, press save. Mm -hmm. And then maybe save it onto your hard drive as yeah. well. So we have two copies. Thanks, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Did ever say 40 hertz? If you yeah, you can go for 40 hertz. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to change it to this type filter. I see the number up here, it says 50. So, so it's in this place in frequency. Yeah, mm -hmm. 50, 60, mm -hmm. you know, they're around there. And then. For example, boosting, it's, I mean. 5 to 8, okay, 5 to 8 kilohertz. Now, kilohertz, <coughs> so you're up kilohertz there. So 5 to 8, and that's boosting, cutting. Are we to save this? It's okay, yeah. yeah. It's supposed to save it, Jen. And 100 to 150, what was it? Really oh, yeah. That'll be here, we're down around here. So see, see this 167. Mm -hmm. So somewhere around that. So same. And yeah. compressor, it will be like same, but in compressor, yeah? Yeah, with the compressor, you don't have frequencies with the compressor. It's kind of a. It's, yeah, so I'm not sure what that what compressor yeah. is there, mm -hmm. but it's just, mm -hmm. you know, that'll be just try a compressor on it, you know, what I mean? if you need to mm -hmm. do the things that. And uh, uh, I didn't go far away in, in this, so like in the end, how it should be? Can you check maybe? Because I'm almost in the end, but like I'm almost in this. Uh, Sorry, I, I was. So I'm now in here. You're up to you as far as the base, is it? Yeah, I'm in here okay, almost. So, the so, like, what it should be in the end? It's till next lesson, or? Um, well, I was going to do the assessment next week, but I'm not sure everybody's kind of ready to go with it yet. Did anybody, how, how finished did you get through once then? Uh, I struggled a bit with it. It felt like it was time at the end. I just felt like it was rushing or something. So yeah. It's the way I want it now, you know? Yeah, I think people maybe need a little bit more time. Um, what I could do next week is offer, like, give half the class to finish off this mix, yeah? And we could do a bit of theory for the other half of the class is digital audio theory that I was going to do later on in the course so we could cover that next week and then we'll do the assessment the week after that yeah so the music making won't come for another few weeks no if anyone's worried about me pushing that out at the end if, if, if I need to put on an extra class at the end we put on an extra class at the end is that okay with everyone yeah yeah I won't sacrifice one thing over something else yeah so I'm 
I'm not really confident that that's doing anything great, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Now, again, when it makes it on a speaker, that's facing away from me as well. You know, on your headphones, you're going to hear more. So, I'm okay with just that on the kick. Remember, you never EQ just for the sake of it, just because, you know, you have a list of things that, oh, well, I definitely want attack, punch, and weight. It's not like kind of a shopping list of things that you're going to add to your mix. It's things, do I need this or not? Now, with the snare, just solo that and I'll listen. Okay, not a bad snare at all. At least it sounds like a snare, not just a big volume sound. So I'm going to get the gate again. And gated drums, drop it on the snare. Now, I can't do anything because the threshold is too high. Don't really need to look at it because there's no pink sound. What's this? Make sure that these have a snare. See, they're hi hats. I want them. So now the hi hats won't get through. Well, those two did. We're going to put a little bit higher for safety. And now the snare comes back in, my gate should open. The snare comes back in. Long break. You can see the little on some of the hi hats. Not necessarily even. I think we need to put I'll show you the compressed level boss. Where is the snare? Ah, wait. Nothing, the snare is going to come back in here. Yeah, we can hear that. We can hear the hi hat when the gate's open, but there's just no game around that. So. With the compressor then, again, I'm probably going to want body, but I'm also wanting to be a bit more uh, body efficient. Right, now, I'm going to EQ the snare while listening to it with the rest of the drum mix. Now everything I said about the kick as regards compression is true for the snare as well, so we don't need two extra notes there. Now, what should the snare have EQ wise? Punch. Yeah, it needs a bit of punch. Well, EQ, get my EQ8. A little of punch. So, punch, about 100 to 300. Now I'd say sizzle would be around... Let's here. It doesn't really say it on that, but I would say around this zone here, which is, that's about 2K. So 2 kilohertz for the snap or in or around, yeah, and for sizzle, I suppose you're talking between three and a half to five kilohertz. Just briefly do 
this on individual channels, but it works well on the drum bus, is a cut of, you know, say, anywhere between 3 and 9 dB, whatever does it for you, at 400 hertz to remove boxiness. makes the kit cleaner sounding. Now what do I mean by cleaner? Sorry, we are in little little man guitar project, yeah? Oh, you don't need to open the projects. I'm just going to mix this one up on the screen, and then when I'm finished doing this one. Now, so in the in computer now, which project I, I should do? Oh, well, no, you don't have to open any of them. This is, if you just take notes. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you don't need you don't need to do what I'm doing with this one. This is just just going to follow me so we not on know. this mix, mm -hmm. and then we'll. Um, and we go to the little little line. Huh? What's that? Yeah, next next open which project we open next? Oh, the next one we're opening is going to be the shift mix two. Yes, okay. I'm going to turn that on. Now, what I mean with cleaner sounding is that it's not going to interfere with all the other parts of the frequency. And yeah, you can have a spare time with that. Yeah. Quite ah. boxing is there. Yeah. Okay, so that's about minus five. Right? Okay, so without that EQ, with EQ. Okay, it sounds cleaner. Do you get what I mean on that? Again, yeah, just one more time, without the EQ. With EQ. So the next thing then with the drum bus is... sounding like different sounds and it starts to become one kind of animal, you know, it just kind of mashes everything together a little bit. If you overdo it, it'll just ruin everything, but a little bit of it. That's why it's called a glue compressor, because it just adds that kind of bonding effect. So there's the glue compressor. Now, I tried to make it a loud one. That's the most obvious one. But uh, obviously it's good this time of the evening. That's good for my ears now at this stage. It's, it's it's nice and strong and kind of just kind of that light is kind of handy, isn't it? The It sounds tight, it sounds strong, and you know, it's got a nice kind of tone to it. You know, it's nice and airy where it needs to be. And if I wanted to, I could add some more airy frequencies up here. But, and 
and all that sounds a little bit too tinny. Right, so the next thing then is the bass. So I have two bass tracks. I'm going to group these. So when you assess them, you want to give me an X because only going to be one bass track. So you won't need to do this next trick. But I'm just going to show it to you here anyway. So the bass DI is much louder. But I just need to make sure that they're both in phase with each other. I'm just going to pick a low peak. Listen to the drums. 
and I'm just basically pushing dots around so it can fill up the space. Maybe this is a soft part here. Could make that soft art to try. So you can see how it's kind of creating those dots by pulling pick and moving them around. How did you get that? See, if I was, was to do it, say 